What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Bunk Bed Breakdowns Film, starring yours truly and at FB God with slightly is that slightly shorter hair? I don't know, man. I can't tell nah, anymore. It's okay, so it's just curved around. It's just curved around. All right, start it up FB all day God. and then I put it down, like it just goes crazy. So I put a hat on just for your, the viewer's sake. They don't have to see <laughs> all curled all, all over the place. Uh yeah. So, you know, this week, uh, if you guys have been in the Discord, you know. That we've been running mock week. I think we have about 60 something. So I'm going to pull that shit together and uh, put out some ADP uh, for you guys. I think that's a pretty damn good sample size, probably better than whatever other sample is out there. Um, and then, you know, what Noah and I are going to do today is we're going to do a mock live uh, with some people in the chat. If you guys join and do the mock with us, if you leave, you're banned forever. Uh, so make sure you guys stick around. It's going to be fun. I mean, uh, you guys know, you know what I feel about mock drafts, but at the end of the day, man, it's, it's a good time. And more importantly though, I think that it's a good way for, you know, Noah and myself to kind of share our views on some of the players. And we're going to do 10 rounds because I mean, mock drafts are already a waste of time, but like, I think doing, getting to like the double digit rounds is when it's just like a total shit show. So we want to really focus on the top. And to me, like that's really where you lose the draft anyways. So like getting the top right is really important. So yeah, yeah, I would say the problem with mock week, not that it's a problem, but we want to do 20 rounds. We can kind of get a top 200, maybe even close to a top 250, obviously 12 times 20 is 240. Great math guy. But I think it's important right now so we can compare the ADP from February to the ADP that we gather when we actually have paid leagues, when it's May, when it's June, when it's July. And we can see how these trends play out as free agency hits as rookie drafts hit as the nfl draft actually comes around we see how different player situations change because of that we can use that information for next year and although mock drafts aren't perfect because money isn't on the line and around 17 people are picking joshua kelly just to spite me or anthony schwartz because we talk about him it is pretty helpful for rounds like one through 12 i would say because i think people are taking it serious because they know that they have drafts coming up and everybody in our discord if you're joining now which you do through patreon.com slash bdge they're paying to be in there. So they want the extra practice for when their leagues actually do come around. And even those that are in there and got in there before became a paid membership to be in the discord are still in a lot of leagues there that are paid that are 25, 50, 100, 250 a year. And they want to get that practice in. So we will be getting that discord ADP, that dynasty ADP out to you probably by the time this drops, if not, at least by the end of the week. And that will be available to, I believe, everybody in the Discord. Maybe we'll even post like the top 20, top 25 players per position on Twitter, just so you guys can get a feel and a gauge for where people are playing, where players are being valued right now, because it is a little bit of a dead zone. And you can maybe find value in guys that are free agents like Aaron Jones, because they don't have a new home yet. Yep, exactly. So we'll get that up. Um, you know, I'll work on that whenever. Uh, and you guys will have that soon in your hands. We'll kind of just track month by month as we go. And then like Noah said, like once the real ADP comes through, through like paid BDG leagues, that's kind of where the, where the moneymaker is. All right. So, I mean, that's all we got. See you guys next week. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> you gotta hit that see. intro, man. Gotta hit that intro. How many seconds over under do you think this will fill in? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 15, 15 seconds. 15? Yeah. Oh, Mike. Sad, sad. Sorry, Mike. I say two, two seconds. Two seconds. I'm calling it. I'm going to screen record it too. And this is going in the video because I put it out the announcement already. And if it doesn't, that's going to look real bad on us that I made that <laughs> prediction. It's going to be real slow. Yeah. All right. I, the one I did, it took like 10 seconds or something when I filled. Yeah, it's, it's real crazy. All right. All right, boys, we're dropping the link. We'll see how much these people actually care about us. Where'd you drop it? I'm about to right now. Oh, okay. It's time, baby. One, two, oh, two, three. We're out here. Four, My phone's going five, crazy. Six, seven eight eight seconds <laughs> love that nice. oh we got nice. john, john conyers my we boy just, i was about to say oh we got mike but that's you who's already in here all right so john we're gonna conyers start the draft right let the games be 
again, this is a super flex draft as well. And I'm sure you can tell that by our roster setting, but we'll see what happens as players come off the board. I think it's gonna be pretty standard for the first round. We see Mahomes off the board, number one. And then John Conyers, he's always liable to take a guy like David Montgomery at the 102. We'll <laughs> see what happens. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, no shocker. Jonathan Taylor, wow. Uh, not a shocker, but still. It's it's fun to see him go that high. Oh, you're picking fifth. Nice. It's I'm on, on the board. Man, it's tough. I have Saquon Barkley and Alvin Kamara really, really close. I know I have Alvin Kamara higher in my rankings. But for the sake of the video, we're going to take this one-legged man right here. I just think I'm undervaluing him too much, and I think a lot of people are as well because he's been injured. And I know yeah. he's on the Giants, but I think his talent is going to outweigh that situation I, very heavily. I think everyone's under Valentine Saquon Barkley. He's one of my top buy candidates. I mean, he's sometimes he's falling into like the second round of drafts. It's crazy. Like be, this is a big dogs league, so big dogs know how to value running backs properly. But if you go to like your standard leagues, like you'll see like eight freaking quarterbacks go off at the top, and you're you're going to see like places where you can we can legitimately land him at pretty damn good value. I'm taking the god. What a fucking beautiful pick! Yeah, that's what I noticed too, and. You know, you always want to jump on the trend of what happened the year prior. So the first year I got into Dynasty, I think was the 2018 offseason, and everybody was going wide receiver at the top. I remember I picked Juju. It might have been 2019 then. Yeah. Juju was like the 110. Odell was like a top five pick. DeAndre yeah, Hopkins. Yeah. It was all wide receiver. Most of them busted. The next year, it was all running back. Now we're seeing a trend where it's all quarterback. I yeah. think we just keep chasing what happened last year in Dynasty, which I know we like laugh about and joke about because Dynasty is supposed to be such a long-term game. Yet we look at what happened last year to make our decisions for the next upcoming season. I know, it's crazy. And I think specifically quarterbacks, like I want Justin Herbert here because uh, I just, I literally really love the player. But I think specifically quarterbacks, I think people are going to overvalue quarterbacks a lot. Like people don't understand, like we're, we are really, really bad at trying to guess where quarterbacks finish. Like every year we're really bad at it. I think we're getting better because people are understanding the Konami code and how important it is. But still, I think we're overestimating. It was a short season. Like, we're not going to see these types of passing stats again, I think, in, in the in the near term. So I think quarterbacks are probably overvalued, especially in, like, the second or third round. It's just people start reaching. Yeah, and I also think once everybody's picking a quarterback in the first two rounds, the positional advantage of having, having a top 10 to top 12 guy is kind of lost because at that point, like, one person's best quarterback is Josh Allen. Another's best is Ryan Tannehill. And the difference there is two, three points a game. But if yeah. you pick a running back and then you pick Kirk Cousins, I mean, the disparity we get with Kirk Cousins in the sixth and a wide receiver in the sixth compared to a oh, wide receiver in the second is crazy. Got fucking sniped. I was literally going to go for Burrow there. Like, opinion from the back, I've actually really liked going quarterback, quarterback open. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess I guess my plans got foiled there a little bit. I think that yeah, we do have, because I'm screen recording mine, we have Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Justin Fields. That's kind of where it gets iffy for me. And I do like Tannehill a little bit lower down the board. Wilson is just tough because he's so good. Yeah, so inconsistent though. Yeah, it's it's tough, tough sell. I love that J.K. Dobbins pick though. Yeah, big fan of J.K. Dobbins. A.J. Brown, the first wide receiver off the board at two point five. This is not going to be like what you see normally out in the wild. You know, if you're not if you're not part of big dogs <laughs> out in the wild, I love that. <laughs> yeah, if you're not part of big dogs community, you're probably going to see a Justin Jefferson go in the first round, right? You're probably going to see like see a Justin Jefferson go one right there. You're probably going to see like a D.K. Metcalf go in the early second. I would say in normal drafts, you'll probably see two to three wide receivers go like by the time where like Dak Prescott went. But because of the big dogs league, uh, they understand positional value. So you're going to see a lot more heavily uh, running back favorite. I love Cam Akers. I was actually deb debating between Cam Akers and Jacob Dobbins. I actually have Cam Akers. I think maybe one spot had Jacob Dobbins, but I've just been mixing it up, uh, going back and forth. I like both a lot. I love Cam Akers because I think he's a workhorse. And uh, he showed he showed towards the end of the season. I mean, you know, people are still kind of like iffy on him. But... Uh, Daryl Henderson's the guy. We know that, Mike. <laughs> it's on you, dude. Yeah, for so sure. Nice. Yeah, I was actually there between surprisingly Derrick Henry. I didn't even see Antonio Gibson. Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, and Russell Wilson just because I wanted a quarterback in round two. Yeah. And the fact that I chose Saquon Barkley made me lean a little bit towards Nick Chubb for the younger aspect. Ooh, but James Robinson in the second round. That's that's high. I love James Robinson, but I, I don't have him that high, unfortunately. I have him very high, but still the second round is crazy because yeah. we love to make the decision or the argument that coaches are rational and front offices are rational and the rational decision is keep james robinson around because he is cheap because he's a good player yeah but i don't know the more this offseason drones on maybe i'm just forgetting how good he is and remembering how stupid gms are i feel like they're just gonna add somebody like bring carlos hyde back and be like you know yeah. what carry the rock 250 times and be a bum yeah chances are they'll add someone which is why you can't take them there like but like even if they add someone if it's not someone of consequence it won't matter but I just it's a little bit too too much risk for me uh, in the in the second round of a super flex startup, this is is it tight end premium or no? 
No, I didn't do tight end premium. Okay, so by cool. this time, if it was tight end premium, I'd assume probably three guys are off the board. I would say Waller would be gone by now too. Waller's been going later. He usually goes in the third, but I agree with you. Like wherever Kittle goes, like Waller should go not that much far behind in my opinion. Can we talk uh, about something that just happened at the turn too? And yeah. somebody mentioned this to me in Discord. Najee Harris is routinely going as the yep. second rookie off the board, but in rookie drafts, he's a consensus 103. Is there a reason for that? I think it's because there's so many quarterbacks off the board that a running back run starts yeah. to happen, which kind of flips the yeah. value in a starter draft compared to a rookie draft. It's because of the runs. There's always a disconnect between rookie drafts and and uh, startup drafts. Like, it's always happened. Like, even last year, right? Like, people were like, oh, Joe Burrow goes first in rookie draft. But if you look at Jonathan Taylor, he was routinely going ahead of him in startups. I think this is fine because, like, it's not that far off, right? It's Najee Harris and then Justin Fields right there, the 3.3. So it's not that bad. Um, but, but, yeah, that routinely happens. I mean, that's actually pretty, like, late in terms of what I've seen for Najee. Najee usually goes ahead of James Robinson uh from what i've seen but wow, uh, dude, more, I, more points hurt whoever's before me has a konami code and a wide receiver at running back i like his team and yeah, i'm kind of stuck love that here team. because i need a quarterback but anybody here for me is a reach running backs man derrick henry in the third people are going to call me blasphemous give me derrick henry in the third i don't even <laughs> dude care. your team is so disgusting barkley <laughs> chubb and derrick henry the, the, was, those three guys can put up like 120 points for you in any given week. It's I crazy. was debating between Metcalf Hill and Devonte Adams, but I'm like, you know, I, I scroll down, I see Michael Thomas down there, I see Devonta Smith's up there, but Calvin Ridley, C.D. Lamb, Allen Robinson, just give me the RB three for like the past two years, and probably mm-hmm. going to be that the next two years as well. Yep, 100. percent Oh, see, now we see Tyree Kill, wide receiver three. This is why you like, I, I just, I cannot fathom like just taking a wide receiver because even if you go through a normal draft like let's say Tyree Kill Adams and a couple of guys are already gone DK Metcalf's gone right you're still gonna have guys in the fourth and fifth you get Michael Thomas in the fourth fifth round I mean oh we'll see Mike I can't wait until the four eight I land Michael Thomas it's gonna happen it's a hundred percent gonna happen and this is kind of where I'm gonna go and just snag where the fuck is my guy here uh (laughs) why's going T Higgins in the third no, I was just gonna gonna grab Tannehill here, uh, because it kind of like really rounds up the group for me. Uh, big fan of Tannehill, obviously, and this kind of keeps my options open. I can compete this year, I can compete next year. Um, I thought about getting Zeke as well, but there's some other guys I like later on the board. I think Zeke at this point is a value. Like, what do you think? I'm a big fan of Zeke in the third round. Yeah, it's troubling to me because I am. Again, it goes back to the thing where it's a long-term game, yet rankings change every week. And for me, I did the video of my top 12 running backs, and Zeke was like RB17. But the more and more I think about it, I'm like, he's 25. He is this yeah. generational talent everybody talks about. And he was good last year despite playing behind a terrible offensive line, no quarterback, being injured. He was sat a lot because of his fumbling and his drop issues. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They have a lot of money tied up in him, and Tony Pollard looked better for, at some points, but he also looked worse at some points. And I don't think Tony Pollard is ever going to be somebody – who supplants no. Zeke or even gets like a 40% snap share. So Zeke to me is somebody who, if you were going to buy, you do it right now. And yeah. probably only if you're contending as well, because he is uh, an aging asset. Who the fuck just timed out? Just like that, Torva Masor is banned from life and for life. God damn. <laughs> oh, he's bad. Oh, uh, here we go. I got my guy here. CD lamb, easy pick. Um, yeah, the reason why I can't draft Justin Justin that early is because like, I don't think him and CD lamb are like that far apart. And I'm consistently seeing CD lamb in the fourth round. So, I'm just going to keep going on that. And and Kelsey in the fourth. That's like getting Henry in the third, and that's going to be like getting Aaron Rodgers in the fifth. Just getting these older guys who are going to give yeah. you elite production for the next two or three years. 100%. I'm a big fan of like – I really think the back part of the draft is a little bit easier to deal with just because of where – how the QBs fall. But it's going to be tougher drafting from the, from the early on. Yeah, it's tough right now looking at the quarterbacks. I'm kind of debating Aaron Rodgers. All right, so Kittle was somebody else I was looking at, which is now off my board. David Montgomery here. I have too many running backs. Plus, I feel like that's about fair value, so I'm not getting any sort of value by taking him there. Wide receiver is still stupid. So dude. stacked. So stacked. Alvin Ridley's like the seventh guy down there. Don't roast me for not knowing how to count, uh, but he's <laughs> he's somewhere along there. Mark Andrews, Darren Waller. I think I got to go A-Rod. And plus, if you look at my team, it's a team that can compete, so I don't mind taking him here. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Rodgers in the fourth. I mean, he's got at least two, three years, maybe four years left of like prime, prime, prime Aaron Rodgers. He's got a great team around him. Uh, this is a really balanced tight end here, right? You see Kelsey, Kittle, and Waller. And I think this is really how it should go. But in reality, it's not going to play like that. You're going to get Waller at a discount because because it just that's just the way it is. Yeah, and not to be conceited or anything, but we are drafting with people that follow us and people that are higher on these players because maybe we talk about them a lot. Like Kirk Cousins isn't going in the fourth round. In yeah, yeah no way. So he was somebody I was going to look at in like round six, maybe at the six, eight. Now I can't do that. So I'm kind of screwed at quarterback, but 
expect these guys to go a little bit lower. And as Mike was saying, Darren Waller isn't often going to go only like four spots behind Travis Kelsey. It's probably a yeah. round or two difference. Oh, this motherfucker took T. Higgins. <laughs> hey, oh, that damn. Bengals stack in the fifth round. Who would have said that? <laughs> uh yeah but, but baker baker had a pretty pretty good end to the season i mean your your kyler murray for baker mayfield trade is still one of the greatest <laughs> of all time but baker did definitely did rebound a little bit so you like to see that I, I i'm a fan of getting him in the late fourth fifth round into motherfucker wow. this guy took trey lance i thought he'd make it back to me I, I i've been testing a lot from the back part of the the fifth and it seems like trey lance really makes it back there so if you want to get trey lance like which i really really do and you're drafting from the back part of the fourth one trade down a little bit or just snag him a little early. I don't think it's going to be a bad move. All right. At this point, I'm struggling. I do like Dave Montgomery here a lot, but I can't let this pass me by. Michael Thomas. In the yeah, fifth there's no round way. No way. Wild. Dude. Yeah. Insane. He was the first round pick last year. He was the only wide receiver going in the first round. And now yeah. he drops four rounds because he sprained his ankle. It doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. And even with Taysom Hill, he was dominating with like a 40% market share of uh of target. So Michael Thomas, like this is why you cannot, if you, if you want to build a contending team, like if you look at build a contending team, look at Noah's team. This is like, this is how you go about building a contending team, I think. And you're going to be a little bit weaker on QB, but that's fine because you're going to win a couple of years. And then you just, you just send your team into the tank after that. There's another um, thing I want to bring up to about Michael Thomas is he set that record for receptions last year, not this past season, the year prior, he had like 1700 yards. I think he was flirting with double digit touchdowns. People were like, okay, he played with Drew Brees. Everything right, went right for him. Do we not, remember that Teddy Bridgewater started and played five games and Teddy Bridgewater is a bum and I actually put out a tweet that Michael Thomas in 14 out of 16 games either had a touchdown or 89 yards and with Teddy Bridgewater he hit those marks every single time so he's one of the most situation irrelevant I guess type of guys he can do it with whoever's behind center even when he has a tight end behind center and Mike mm -hmm. I love your pick as well DJ Moore is just a younger Michael Thomas who's getting disrespected yeah. in a division that doesn't play defense yeah, I mean, DJ Moore, we've seen his floor. His floor is a, a low-end wide receiver one. We have yet to see him play with a good quarterback. We, we know that the Panthers are in the market. So I'm hoping that to see some big moves from them in the draft to maybe land someone. Uh, so I think the ceiling is the roof when it comes to DJ Moore. In terms of his, like, age-adjusted production, one of the best we've seen. Like, I tweeted out earlier, like, the top five receivers in yards was, like, DeAndre Hopkins, like, DJ Moore, I think Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill. Only one of those players is going to be below – age 30 uh, age 20 27 uh come draft time and dj moore's gonna be age 24 so i think he's incredible value he was going like third round last year startup and like now for whatever reason people hate him so definitely Wild definitely get him top i hope there's one quarterback i'll, I'll circle him on my screen i hope he falls me because that's another point i want to bring up but i'm not going to talk about him right now even again looking at this guy at the turn lance dittrich he gets Devonte adams stefan diggs chris godwin deandre swift lamar jackson like, I know we talk about trading back a lot in the startup, but to have those five as your core, if you yeah. don't trade back and you end up with that, that's absolutely Money. ridiculous. Kareem Hunt was a bit egregious, but he did need the running <laughs> back, even though he has a Lamar Jackson Swift, so he's got two. But, I mean, there's just so much value on the board. I think my team, as you hit on, like, going for veterans that people discount because they're older – despite 16 weeks there's no longer 16 weeks than an nfl season like an yeah. nfl fantasy football season might as well be three years it feels so long that by the time you're in week eight a guy who's 27 it doesn't even matter anymore because you're making the push for the chip and you don't care that he's 27 yeah javante williams a bit too early for me in the fifth um but i don't know where he's gonna go either in the in the real draft so we'll kind of have to see how that plays out um i'm gonna go right here god there's just I know you're there's so I know you're so Mike. much. There's so much fucking value here, and there's yeah, like but... nothing you can do. Like Mike Evans in the sixth round. Mike Evans just continually get disrespected. All right, he had a he had like what 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. I had him picked as the potential wide receiver one overall because I thought he could get like the double digit touchdowns. I didn't know how crazy of a season would be, but he played with a hamstring injury all year long, and we keep writing off Tom Brady, and I'm just done doing that. I think Tom Mike Mike Evans is in for another monster season next next year. It's about to happen, Mike. You brought up the name. Jared Goff went ahead of him. I hope to God Tom Brady falls to me, yeah. and he does. And Amari Cooper is another guy I was looking at. If you look at the names on the list here, Matt Ryan, Daniel Jones, Carson Wentz, Derek Carr, Jordan Love, all these guys have one to two years left, and so does Tom Brady. But Tom Brady's one to two years left are undoubtedly, undoubtedly going to be better than any of these guys. Jared Goff as well. Right? What's he got, one or two years in Detroit? Man, fuck Detroit. We're going to Tampa Bay, <laughs> and we're getting 40 touchdowns. I got old quarterbacks. I don't care. I can revamp them in the 2023 class. So I'm I'm pretty happy with how my team sits. I'm set at running back yeah. and with the plethora at wide receiver, the plethora of wide receivers still available. 
That's crazy. And there's been no tight ends. There was one round of tight ends and no other tight end has gone in any other round. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, oh, wow. MCL91002 is going for a little bit of risky strategy there. A bit of a retrunk Chris Carson, in my opinion. But if you look at, if you look at Noah's team. MCL, so he knows how to fix it up. (laughs) If you look at Noah's team and my team, we're basically, you know, very polar opposites. Like Noah's very well positioned to win this year. So win now, he can, he, and keep in mind, he hasn't used any draft picks to trade up yet, right? So he can use those to kind of bolster up as well. I I mean, if, if if this Kirk Cousins team, for example, falls apart mid season, Noah could very easily flip a first into a Kirk Cousins, go contend in the, into the playoff. My team is not really built to contend from year one. I think I got a lot of, lot of leeway here, but I think in like two to three years, you know, I think I can probably uh, give Noah room for his money. But two of my favorite young rookie wide receivers, Brandon Ayuk and Chase Claypool, who I missed on horribly last year, but are both in my You're top four wide receivers. Um, they're going there. The value there is insane, like in the sixth round, late sixth round for those guys. So, yeah, just again, just to look at the wide receivers that were drafted from round four on like just look at these right wide receivers like Dude, what did shock Allen, you 6.9 what a nice spot to pick him up but he's a guy who was top what five or six when he was playing and he's still tethered to justin yeah. Herbert. this is wild and another thing i want to hit on you talked about how your team is super young and you did pick mike evans who's technically on the older side but because he's at that big of a value not that you want to draft players to be able to trade them but the fact that mike evans can be taken as like the wide receiver 22 off the board you're going to be able to recoup more than wide receiver 22 value when this season's actually yeah in full swing 100%. Rashad Bateman, Jalen Waddle, two of my favorite young wide receivers. You have Bateman as wide receiver one overall, correct? I do. I mean, it's kind of just like a, a Jalen Rager play, and I'm yeah. going for that side of things, but I do believe in his talent. I'm going to go Kyle Pitts here. Um, it might Ooh. hurt me based on my team's structure, but I am a believer in his talent and the arguments I made that if he is as good of a tight end as everybody thinks and he's at, as athletic and he's going to get the draft capital wow, that wow, everybody Gaskin. assumes. That is crazy. early for Miles Gaskin. That is way too early for my taste. Not because I don't think he's a good player, but because – it's just too much risk involved there. Uh, I mean, so Gaskin Daniel just Jones. seems like such a jag to me. I don't know. I just, when I watch him play, he's terrible on the goal line. He catches like 50 passes for 200 yards. I don't see how he doesn't get replaced. And that's a team that wants to use a workhorse. So if they do get Aaron Jones or somebody in the draft, I don't know. Gaskin might be just somebody who gets kicked to the wayside. Yeah. So this is where I'm going to go with, uh, with my guy here. Uh, Juju. I'm, I'm actually still a big believer in Juju Smith-Schuster. I, my, my ideal landing spot for him is actually Green Bay Packers, so I'm going to see where he goes, but I'm kind of just going with my, like, call it like zero or modified zero RB build here, where I'm like young and going in the future, but I think Juju in the seventh round is wild. Like Noah said, he was the first round starter pick a couple years ago. Last year was like a third or fourth round starter pick. Um, I think, you know, he struggled a little bit, but well, in the right landing spot, he could still be a pretty fantasy, fantasy gold mine. Yeah, what do you have, like 95 catches for 900 yeah, yards this year? And he was good in the red zone, and that's what he was dominant at. If it wasn't yards after the catch, it was red zone usage early in his career. So the fact that he yeah. still showed that this year, if he lands somewhere that doesn't have two other up-and-coming wide receivers like he did this past season, I do believe that the talent is somewhat there. I guess it goes back to Nick's point that he always brings up, like, is he really all about football? He seems to be more of a celebrity at this point. <laughs> yeah, but, definitely. But the talent is there. And looking at these wide receivers, it's crazy to me. Eighth round, Julio Jones is on the board. I don't care how old he is. Julio Jones is not an Oh, eighth. fuck, Corlin Sutton. I forgot about Corlin Sutton. I would I would have taken Corlin Sutton over Drew Smith Schuster. So I, that's a fuck up by me. I totally forgot about him. Uh, big fan of Corlin Sutton. Big, this big is... Fan. I'm just going to scroll down. Like once you get to the Pittmans, eh, it's kind of, it's kind of shitty, but even Tyler Boyd is down there and Tyler Boyd will be undervalued yeah. until he's dead and retired. <laughs> see, this me- is where you see people start reaching for quarterbacks, right? You got Jameis Winston, Derek Carr, Daniel Jones, Matt Ryan, like all these guys got question marks, like, like Noah said. So you might as well swing for a Tom Brady where I, I think they're going to resign Chris Godwin. Right. So, so that's one big thing there. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I did not expect him to make it back to me, but he did. So I'm going to take Rondell Moore. Um, as it looks like the wide receiver, like what wide receiver six in the class. Um, yeah, it's pretty far down, down there. I thought you were going to count all the receivers taken. I'm like, Mike, just say 40. You can just say 40 <laughs> and get away with it. Yeah, but look at, see, this is where all the value is. Like the wide receivers, people understand this. Like, and, and just know, like, like Noah said, right? This is not how your real draft is going to look because people are going to take some of these guys earlier um, and it's going to push some of the other value down. But like, just look at how much value there is, man. So much value at wide receiver. Now, this is a guy I'm not a huge fan of, but there's potential there. And I'm going to take him because he's still super young. He's Ronald Jones. He's somebody oh, okay. I was off of last season. He looked good when given the opportunities. If he cleans up his hands and he doesn't fumble as much, which is like a whole lot to fix. I don't know. I think that offense, pairing him with a guy like Tom Brady, getting that stack, getting every touchdown you can on that offense, offense because Tom Brady will rush it in himself on the one. But Ronald Jones can break away a big play. It's not a great pick, but there's still so many receivers that I'm fine with. Thomas is my one. And getting somebody like Tyler Lockett, eh, kind of fucked Tyler Lockett. But DJ Chark is my two. 
um, even like a Will Fuller, Odell down here. There's just so much value still left on yeah. the board. Robert Woods going at the 811 is just the value of all values. You're just going to continue to get him at value every single draft. Like, I mean, no, it could have easily taken him there too because how stacked he is at running back. So, yeah, just know there's there's incredible, incredible value to be had um, down here. There's one other guy down here, and I hope he falls to me. He probably will because he's super far down the board unless I – oh, there he is. Debo Samuel. I mean – Oh, the, yeah, yeah, Debo Samuel. In the Love ninth that. round, it doesn't I, – I keep saying it doesn't make sense to me. I don't think he and Brian Dayuk should be separated by three rounds. I think that they're a lot closer in terms of projected production than what these, the draft capital says about them. I agree. I agree. Debo Samuel is down there. And I, I don't know. I know you don't, you're not a big fan, but I think uh, one of these other guys, if, if he makes to me um, like Marquise Brown, I, I think he actually has a good shot at becoming a top 24 uh, wide receiver. So I'm a big fan of him. Uh, if he makes to me, I'll probably grab him. And I think he's, he's someone that can have that value bump because um, he did finish strong. Uh, granted, it was a, on a couple of TDs as well, but you kind of started seeing that connection develop later hey, touchdowns on. Touchdowns count, Mike. Touchdowns count for fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They still count. So can't ignore them. Uh, let's see who goes here. But yeah, still a lot of value here at a wide receiver. I mean, not just for veterans, but also rookies. You got, you know, Terrace Marshall, you got Deami Brown, who I'm a big fan of, you guys know. Um, and then you got like the super, super deep value guys like Jameson Crowder, um, Gabriel Davis, who I'm actually a big fan of as well. You know, and then you got Antonio Brown, man. People don't forget about Antonio Brown. Fuck, Scott took Will Fuller. Okay. I like that pick too. Will Fuller consistently falls to the ninth round, and then Brandon Cooks falls to the tenth. They're probably not going to be on the same team after this year, and I think both of them can thrive in that one B situation and put up 1,200 yards apiece, which is kind of crazy to say. But I think Will Fuller showed this year he actually can be a one A. Yeah, depending where he goes, that'll all work out in the end, but. Yeah, just, whatever drugs he's taking, he's got to keep taking them, man. Because whatever yeah, drugs he's Will Fuller on the field, it should be it should be legal for everyone. Wherever he goes, he just needs to find someone with clean piss, and then he'll be a wide receiver one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so who do we got here? Dallas oh, I was Goddard's just... going pretty late too. I figured after Ertz went down and how bad he looked this year, he might be somebody who goes around that Noah Fant range, and it's only around later. But I I think he's talented enough. He's a little bit older, but then again, tight ends are now producing when they're 32, 33 years old. I'm yeah. not worried about his age at all. I love Dallas Goddard. I would have taken him too, um, but like I just don't draft or need this early, so I would rather make a trade for him later. Um, and, oh, Mac Jones, that was a great pick. I was I was actually thinking about Mac Jones as well. That's kind of my QB three there. I think he's going to get a de decent enough draft capital to make him make him worth it. Um, what do we got here? Kenneth Gainwell, a little bit earlier for me, but if he gets draft capital, definitely could be pretty interesting. Uh, the running backs just aren't interesting. Like this is why you got to go running back early, kind of like what what uh, Noah did. Because now you're looking, you're basically at backups and like old guys that you don't want to touch. So the only guy I would touch that seems somewhat intriguing, uh, pause, is Damian Harris. He is a little bit lower. I don't know why I says he's questionable. The season's fucking over. But <laughs> him being 136 in terms of ADP, they have both Rex Burkhead and James White as unrestricted free agents. Mike, you're about to time out and get banned. Oh shit, that's me. I, I was I was waiting for a fucking. One second, one uh, second. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. How do I pause this? Fuck. Whatever. All right, you're stuck with Robert Tanya, and it's fine. <laughs> no, that that that's who I had queued. That's why. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Um, I love Brandon Cooks. <sighs> that's tough. I wanted Brandon Cooks real bad, so we're gonna have to search through through the wide receivers real quick. Parker and eh, Jarvis Landry. He's all right for a floor play. I guess it could help me for this season. Got Corey Davis there. Deami that's Brown. What, that's what I was looking at, man. Deami Brown, I'm too old to be messing with Deami Brown with this type of lineup. <laughs> I think I'm going to Corey Davis and hope that he gets the bag on a team that is willing to use him as the Titans used him this year. And although he isn't a 1A as a 10th round pick in my wide receiver three, I'm yeah. fine with him being a 1B or even a 2. 900 Dude. yards, 1,000 yards, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, Noah's team's pr looking pretty pretty savage. Honestly, though, if I were you, I, I probably would have passed on Ronald Jones and snagged the Robert Woods, you know? I think that would have rounded out your team pretty nice. Yeah, I, I got a little sauced up there, but <laughs> I, I kind of like how it turned out. Kyle Pitts might be a little bit iffy because tight ends early on, but I believe yeah, but in him. They being, all suck. Yeah, so That is matter. true. They all do stink. And with the last pick, Mr. Irrelevant, please be somebody that this channel hates. Big Jordy, don't let us down. If he takes Josh Kelly, this video is going in the fucking dumpster. <laughs> Come on, Big Jordy. I know him Get too. It. I did a Discord video with him, and I know he's somebody that would do something like that. Or like find Eddie Lacy from the slums and put him in here. <laughs> or he's in a timeout. Oh, uh, Michael Carter. Uh, MCW. Rookie of the year for the 76ers. All right. All right, I guess we can talk about the board overall. I have it up on the screen. Yep. 
we kind of went through it as it happened. But I think what you notice is just color coding paint by numbers. The It's so blue from round five and on just looking down. There's so yeah. much wide receiver value that once round five hits, you can no longer look past them, right? DeAndre yeah. Hopkins, Michael Thomas, Calvin Ridley, T. Higgins, like round five is dominated by them. And then everybody thereafter, just because quarterbacks and running backs push them down so far. Yeah. One thing I will say is uh, I know you're not uh, as big of a fan, but Joe Mixon in the fifth round is something that I'm, I'm very interested by. Uh, cause I, I think he's still going to get that workhorse volume and we'll kind of see how it plays out. I, I mean, I'm not going to have the high sky high top five expectation I used to have, but I think he's a pretty, pretty easy lock for like a top 10, top 12 finish just cause just on volume alone. So I think that's one interesting thing that I want to call out. And then the other thing is, you know, kind of, kind of like what Noah said, right? Like it, the wide receiver value is just too good to pass on. Like I, I wasn't even looking at running backs. Like once we got to round four, like I don't even filter for running backs anymore. That's why probably why I mixed missed on Joe Mixon, but. Like at that point, it's like, it's basically wide receiver or bust. You can get so many good ones. It doesn't matter what you want. You want young ones, DJ Moore. You want, you want slightly more, uh, more uh, proven and veterans that with higher upside. Mike Evans is there. You got Allen Robinson, Terry McLaurin. You want rookies? No problem. Right. You got, you got freaking, you know, Rondell Moore, Jalen Waddle, like all these top guys, anyone, anyone except a Jamar Chase, even Jamar Chase went in the fifth. I think, I think realistically we'll see him go in the fourth, basically close to where I, where I took CD lamb, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. but you can take your pickings, right? Like that, that's the beauty of wide receiver values. Like you don't have to get veteran value. You can get any type of value you want. Brandon, I, you chase Claypool, young guys, old guys, doesn't matter. It's just, it's just an embarrassment of riches at the wide receiver position. Yeah. And a huge reason for that as well is look at all the quarterbacks that went before round five. So the last quarterback taken in round four was Baker Mayfield. And then thereafter, it's all basically speculative picks. I guess Tom Brady, because he has proven that he can be a top 12 guy, but he's older, is the only one after round five where we basically know what the production is going to be. Mm -hmm. Jared Goff, we don't know the longevity there. Matt Ryan, same thing. Jimmy G, Mac Jones, Derek Carr, and the two fifth round rookies in Trey Lance and Zach Wilson. We don't know if they're starting their rookie year. We don't know where they're landing. So I do think that once the rookie draft rolls around and you're drafting in May and June, and we know these landing spots, and we know if Jimmy Garoppolo is there to stay, we know what happens with Carson Wentz and all these guys, it will be shaken up a little bit. But I think the trend from what I've seen this year is rounds one through four is literally 95% wide receiver or, quarter, or running back or quarterback. And that just allows for so much wide receiver value. And it might be one of those years we're playing the arbitrage play and getting that, like the only JDP with Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill. And then Austin Eckler later, that might be the winning move because those guys can realistically put up 15 to 20 points a game. And then Eckler's your running back one in the fourth round isn't that bad of an option. Yeah, it's it's super interesting. I guess, you know, let's let's think about this though. Like what, you know, what are some holes in your team? Like if we were to go past the 10th round, right? You mentioned, you know, what a tight end is obviously an issue for you, right? Like what what would you be what would you be looking for? Like targeting the double digit rounds for tight end to kind of pair along with the Kyle Pitts. Yeah, so I can't see the draft board right now. But what I've seen routinely through doing our mock week are two guys who I really like that go super late are Logan Thomas and Hayden Hurst. Now, neither of them are going to blow you out of the water in terms of production, but they're older players on teams that have shown that they want to target either target the tight end position or don't have anybody else to target like in Washington and then throw the ball to Logan Thomas a ton. So in the beginning of the season, when I don't know what to expect out of Kyle Pitts, to be able to throw a guy like Logan Thomas or a Hayden Hurst or Hunter Henry went in the ninth round, so I couldn't get him, but somebody of that type of caliber, even like a Zach Ertz, if he find, finds his way on a new team or he stays in Philly, I'm fine playing one of those guys as my tight end one because you look at the rest of my team, and I think the disparity between one of those guys and a kill or a Kelsey may not be completely made up for with my running backs, but it'll be pretty damn close by having Derrick Henry in a flex spot. Yeah, I think another name uh, that would go really well with your team is like a Cole Komet, you know, someone mm -hmm. that we weren't, we weren't really a big fan of, but like you kind of saw him get a really big uptick in usage towards the back part of the year. And we know tight ends take a long time to develop. So seeing that was was pretty good. And also like Jimmy Graham basically came out and, you know, subtly said or not so subtly said through Twitter that he's done. So I, I think he's got a decent opportunity there. And that'd be like an interesting pairing, right? Cause you get a Kyle Pitts who's brand new. And if Kyle Pitts smashes right out the gate, your team's going to go to the moon. Right. But if he takes a little bit longer, you have, you have someone who has some experience with not a lot of weapons there uh, who, who can be fun, a lot of big targets um, uh, in Chicago. So I really like Cole Komet uh, as, as someone that could pair with your team for my team specifically. Like, you know, I only have two quarterbacks, so I don't, I don't love that part about it. I, I probably would have wanted to get a third one, but there just wasn't really any value there. And given I'm not really competing, 
uh, this year, at least not making a hard push. I'd be, you know, I'd be looking to try and trade and get some other rookie picks to try and snag uh, maybe a high pick next year. So that's, that's kind of the route that I would go. And then I would also grab a tight end, like I said, like a Cole Komet, someone to pair with Robert Tanya, someone who's young and has a lot of upside. And then in the later, later rounds, I would probably target like a Harrison Bryant or a, uh, or Adam Troutman just to see what happens. Yeah, even um, with your team as well, the fact that you have Mike Evans and all these other young guys, when the season's in full swing, and I know I said it during the actual draft, but when you see Mike Evans putting up, like last year realistically was kind of a down year for Mike Evans when you looked at his like week over week production, but he still finished with 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns. When he does have his mediocre season of 1,200 yards and seven, eight touchdowns, in the middle of the year, week six, week seven, somebody is going to throw you a first round pick for him. Those teams don't always win at all. Mike Evans might not take that team over the top, and that pick could turn into the 108-109, which this year could be a Javante Williams, could be a Rashad Bateman, could be a Rondell Moore, could be a Trey Lance. And I know next year isn't as deep, but it's also next year, and we don't know how good these players are. Like, nobody expected Zach Wilson to come out of nowhere. Nobody was talking about Javante Williams the year prior. Nobody knew about Joe Burrow. So there's always these guys that come out of nowhere on top of the other proven assets, the other Sam Howells the other yep. Brees Hall. So there's always, it's always deeper than you may expect a year out and being able to pick Mike Evans in the sixth and flip that into a guy who is probably going to be like a fourth or fifth round star to pick next year. Uh, it just brings more value to your squad. Yep. hundred percent. So, I mean, pretty interesting board. I don't think there's anything like crazy, crazy other than like miles gat miles Gaskin in the seventh and like Chris Carson in the sixth. I think those were, those are a little bit wild. And then, you know, maybe a couple of the, a couple of the rookie wide receivers. Like I, I would not take Devonta Smith in the six ten. And I think even if you are really, really high on Devonta Smith, I think that's too early uh, for most rookie wide receivers. So I'll just, just be mindful. I mean, in startups, I find that rookie wide receivers don't come at a great value. Uh, whereas I think rookie quarterbacks do. Cause if you think about it, right. Like, you know, like a Trey Lance and a Zach Wilson, like fifth, sixth round startup, like that's probably as cheap as they'll ever be unless they are a total bust. So mm -hmm. Those are those are the places where I kind of look for arbitrage where like rookie wide receivers. I rarely leave startups with a lot of rookie wide receivers unless I get them at an incredible, incredible value. Yeah, we can uh, see that play out in this board too. Look at the seven, eight. It's Daniel Jones. He hasn't been good in like a year and a half, yet he's yeah. still a seventh round starter pick because he's a starting quarterback who has that Konami code. We know Trey Lance, we know Zach Wilson can do both those same things. They'll probably have longer leashes after their rookie year than Daniel Jones has going into his third year now, I think. Yep. So as Mike said, this is basically their floor unless they turn into a Dwayne Haskins. And as well, like looking at the rookie wide receivers, we see that play out as well. Did Jalen Rager even get picked? No, he did not. Denzel okay. Mims went in the 10th round. And then people are spending, as you said, sixth round picks on Devonta Smith, even a seventh rounder on Jalen Waddle and Bateman. Those probably are pretty good values for Waddle, Bateman, and Rondell Moore where you got him. Yeah. But then again, if you can get a Julio Jones, if you're competing, I'd probably just take the safe bet in Julio Jones because if Rondell Moore has a Denzel Mims season and Julio Jones yeah. reverts back to what he is, maybe you can make that flip if the team who drafted a Rondell Moore wants to compete and get a Julio Jones. So yeah. I agree with you completely that taking rookie wide receivers, it looks nice to have that young core, but I don't know, seven times out yeah. of 10, it probably won't work out too well for you. Like looking at the board, only Justin Jefferson, CD lamb, and then Claypool and Ayuk are kind of outliers, but those are the only two that were drafted high that increased their value. Yeah. I, th I think, you know, it, another way to put it, like th there's no way in hell I'm taking a Devonta Smith in the sixth when I can get a Cortland Sutton in the eighth, right? Like mm -hmm. Cortland Sutton is already a proven wide receiver and I Cortland Sutton arguably, I mean, I, I totally forgot about him, which is why I whiffed on him. But Colton Sutton, in my opinion, should be going basically where like T. Higgins and Calvin Ridley uh, and like at least at a bare minimum where Chase Claypool and Red Brandon Ayuk are going, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. it's just it's just way too much, way too much value to be had there to go with like a Devonta Smith or even a Rashad Bateman, Jalen Waddle, who I, who I absolutely love. Uh, I just think there's too much value at the veteran wide receiver position. Like if you're if you're building like a startup and you want to have more flexibility, you want to have a chance to go at it and win. Like, I think you really got to take advantage of the veteran wide receiver value, as you can see, which is plentiful. Uh, plentiful. Yeah. And I think that that's one thing that anybody takes away from this video. And I'm sorry if you're a podcast listener, because we're like looking at the draft board and you're just hearing us talk about it. So I hope we talk well enough for you to understand where these players went. If there's one thing to take away from this, just look where the receivers go, right? Terry McLaurin at the six, two Robinson, six, three, Mike Evans, six, four, Amari Cooper, six, seven, Keenan Allen, six, nine, Sixth round, you can get legit wide receiver ones. There is no reason, unless you are huge fans of these players, which I can't knock you for that. Like, that's part of your process that you like to watch them play. You want them on your team, go for it. But the fact that you can get these high end producers in the sixth round, Michael Thomas in the fifth round, just tells me don't spend up at wide receiver. And we say ad nauseum, but there's really no reason to do it because even if you spend a six round pick on these guys, 
I'd venture to say most of them, 50% are going to probably increase their value. Whereas a second round pick on AJ Brown could increase a little bit, but AJ Brown's also like 23 and had an awesome season. He might be capped out around this pick, which isn't a bad thing, but you're picking him at near his ceiling because I don't see him ever jumping a top five running back in terms of a startup picks value wise. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that that's like the core of my strategy as well as why I trade to trade down a lot is I want to target this range of like, if you look at round four to like round six, maybe even round eight, I think those are like the ranges where you can really get like massive upside, like wide receivers, like a CD lamb who can jump to where AJ Brown is, right? Like a DJ Moore who can absolutely jump up to the third round, which we've seen them before you do that before. And you have guys like a Brandon Ayuk, like a Chase Claypool, T Higgins. These are all guys I think can jump to where we see like Justin Jefferson uh, and AJ Brown are right now but you just don't have to pay up for it. And I think that that's the way to play wide receivers. So that kind of like chase upside in those middle rounds. And then uh, don't, don't spend up and like pick, pick players who are basically cap ceilings. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's going to end the video. Let me make sure I get the editing, right? All right. We got the screen recording down. We are recording the zoom, so it's not going to be fucked up. I'm so proud of myself and it's like getting darker. So now my face is, you can't see anything, which is probably good for the viewers. So <laughs> I guess we can just wrap this up here. Yeah. All right. That's all we got for you guys uh, for mock week. Make sure uh, we'll, we'll put out the ADP for you guys. So you guys can use it and see it. Uh, so make sure you stick around for that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you like the video, drop in the comments below. If you have feedback, if you think people took stuff too high, if you took them too low, if you want to talk about the mock, do that. Uh, make sure you hop in the discord uh, by becoming a Patreon member of big dogs and a lot of stuff going on there with like leagues and everything in the off season. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you stick around, man. And make sure you subscribe to this channel as well, man. The main bunk bed breakdown channel. We got a ton of videos coming out. No, and I are about to record the NBA top shots video for this week. A lot of action going on over there. So if that's, if you're in the money making business, uh, make sure you hop on over there and follow us and uh, tune in as well. But uh, yeah, until next time, that's all we got. Peace. Peace. Channel, chat on zone. Foolies, glad I'm on. Even my haters kind of glad I'm on. Rest in peace to my bag up on. Rap a song, singer, suspended, subpoena from Mr. Meaner's dreamer. Hell back asses, Loki still a deer. And I still shake a boat squat. Ram on my boat, got city on the come.